we are going to get into very basics of python what exactly is python and the whole concept of coding coding is one such skill that you must have as a data scientist and you can never run away from coding that means let's say without python maybe you can survive for a couple of years but later on at some point of time coding will come back to you and say that uh, this is something that's a must have skill okay in fact uh, that is one of the life skill that everybody must have in future if you see even in schools now nowadays uh, python has been introduced do you know that in cbse curriculum at ninth class or eighth class level at least python basics have been introduced maybe they may not know completely end to end of coding but at least uh, they would be learning some of the basics of uh, python so in this particular program i am going to take the responsibility to make sure that everybody who is attending this classroom is going to be very confident in coding i'm not saying that you will be an expert at uh, python coding at the end of this program i'm saying that you will be confident in the sense that at the end of this training if somebody throws a challenge at you which is related to python coding you should be able to give an answer it doesn't necessarily mean that you remember all the syntax it doesn't necessarily mean that within uh, one iteration or within one go within half an hour within one hour you are going to give the output may not be but given a time you can put some effort it's not like you are totally blank you will be able to follow a certain structured path and then you will be able to give a solution this i can promise so if you have already some basics of coding well and good even if you do not have i am assuming that everybody in this classroom has zero knowledge of coding from there we will start by chance if you already have good knowledge maybe initially you may feel a little bit repetition but that is required basics have to be fundamentally we have to be very strong so at any point of time while we are going through this course if you feel that you are not able to get it it's not your problem maybe it's my problem i have to give you another example i have to tell you in such a way that you can understand i have to give you an analogy or i have to give you a visualization that you can understand easily okay i'll make sure that everything in this course you are able to understand whatever we are discussing in the classroom and after the classroom after every meaningful stopping point i'm going to give you some assignments that will even make you better thinkers when you apply whatever we have learned in the classroom all right with that we will get started with uh, python python is a multi purpose language now there is one big uh, misconception or there is one big misleading uh, point about python is you can use python and uh, you can use python in uh, software development you can use uh, python in web scraping or web uh, building you can use python as a development tool or you can use python for data handling you can use python for machine learning model building fine tuning you can use python for data visualization as a data scientist now the learning path to become a developer is very different from the learning path to become a data scientist python developers would be using totally different packages different set of commands different functions different keywords django framework flash framework totally totally different learning path data scientists on the other hand would be using different packages different functions different commands you must know what is your end goal if you want to become a developer based on that your python learning path will be decided if you want to become a data scientist based on that your python learning path will be decided obviously in our course we are focusing on the data science side of it the reason why i'm highlighting this here is a lot of people out of their own enthusiasm they want to learn python they go to internet and search for python courses now by mistake if you are landing your yourself on this course which is python for developer it will be totally you will be totally clueless it will be totally overwhelming we don't know what to do there it seems that python is very difficult to follow so when you want to learn when you are exploring make sure that you are going for the courses that say python for data science are you with me everyone is that point clear python for data science is very different from python to become a developer python is a multi purpose language it is used at multiple places it can solve multiple problems and we are looking at python as a solution for our data science problems i want to write some code related to data science i want to import some data i want to visualize some data i want to make a model that will predict some of the sales in those cases if i want to use python what are the syntax etc that is what we are going to discuss in this classroom python is open source it's a very powerful scripting language and the reason why we are right now learning python is it is used by almost 90% of the data scientists and developers around the world everybody around the world is right now crazy about python if you ask me my overall experience with uh, python 
initially when i started working in city bank and then moved to hsbc then to hp initially during 2006 during 2008 at that time sas was the only tool sas was almost like 99% market share that was the only tool that was used in data science data analytics during those days it, those teams are known as data analytics teams so data analytics teams used to use sas slowly they have experimented with r now this is i would say 2008 2010 during that time now if you come to 2014 2015 2016 during that time r was very prevalent and then uh, from 2018 onwards i would say maybe from past 6 years python has been the go to tool are there still companies using r yes maybe are there still companies using sas maybe maybe within the company are there some teams that are using sas yes some of the companies still follow sas because of uh, some of the security features or there are some features that are there in sas may not be there in python so mostly people are using python still sas is being used but if you ask me what is the most widely used tool for data science projects machine learning projects i would say that is python now how do you get the advantage maybe if you showcase yourself as you are good at python as well as you are good at sas it shows that you have an authentic experience because sas like the way python is openly available outside sas is not that openly available or not that openly taught so if you show i know sas as well as i know python then you are considered as a kind of diamond candidate okay where you will have higher chances of picking for a job so i'll try to make python easy for you once you learn one coding language then instead of focusing on python you focus on coding aptitude once you have that coding aptitude you can learn any coding tool maybe right now python is prevalent who knows in future some other tool may come up do you agree python will be there for 100 years or 200 years from here on we cannot say that when i was learning sas when i was working on sas i never thought that sas will be replaced it will be irreplaceable that's what i thought but now it has been replaced similarly if there is a better tool that comes which is working much faster much simpler much more uh, features than python people will shift to that tool are you with me so let us understand like it's almost like coding is a new language like the way let's say you have your mother tongue but for you to interact with everybody who is outside your state or outside of your mother tongue you use english or hindi now if you want to interact with computers you have to use another language that is coding maybe it can be python it can be c++ it can be java javascript any of them but you must have that coding skill set with you and i will make sure that you are getting that coding skill set by the end of this program okay i will make sure that everybody is confident by the end of this program if you are not confident i will make sure that i am personally interacting with you and for some of you if you are struggling i'll make sure that i'm giving you a personalized learning path so that you can pick up quickly if people are doing quickly and if you feel that you are finding it very easy then i'll give you slightly difficult challenges so that you can learn even more and more maximum out of it okay so in this journey we will go together the only promise that you have to make is outside the classroom you have to watch these videos multiple times outside the classroom you have to make sure that you are completing the assignments that i'm going to float later on okay python has been uh, created by a person called guido von rusum you can follow him on uh, twitter he is the guy who uh, wrote this python he is known as bdfl that means uh, benevolent dictator for life usually this uh, title is given for somebody who creates uh, an open source and gives it as open source so he is the dictator for python basically he is the creator of python let me tell you one thing what uh, once he said that is let's i created python but if i want to write python code still i google and i search for syntax have you understood what he is trying to say he himself cannot write the whole program within one go without searching here and there so if you feel that you're not able to get out or you're not able to recollect the syntax that is totally fine even i myself if you give me a task i may have to search for the code here and there okay python uh, the first version was released in uh, 1991 second version like python 2 was 2000 2008 this is when it got famous and then the keep on versions keep on coming in even in 2024 there was a new version that got released so usually when you install python automatically the latest stable version will be installed so if we go to python uh, website and if we try to install right now it is 3.112.5 that is the one that gets installed uh, python is installed by using uh, multiple options i'm going to show you them so anything above 3.10 is good enough so you don't need to actually 
select what exactly is the version that you want to install automatically it gets installed the latest stable version not necessarily the latest version maybe latest version is the 3.14 probably i'm just guessing or maybe 3.13 but this may not get installed the latest stable version the one that is working without any bugs or something or bugs have been cleaned that will be installed first of all how do you install python so you can install python one of the easiest way to install python is by installing a software called anaconda so anaconda is a software if you install anaconda automatically it will install ipython notebook jupyter notebook spider ide so it will install several ides what is an ide ide is an interface where you write the python code then this will send your code to the python compiler and give you the output so generally people ask you like what IDE, which IDE are you using? By IDE, it means it's an interface. Let us suppose if you are working on SQL, there are not multiple IDEs. You just use MS SQL and then uh, write it there. But if you're working on Python, there are multiple IDEs that you can try. One of the most widely used IDE is Python Notebook. So Python Notebook is one of the IDE. In local, it is known as Jupyter Notebook. And on Google, it is known as Colab Notebook. Once you install Anaconda, automatically Python will be installed. So let me show you once you have installed Anaconda, how do you open the Python coding environment? And today's session is a kind of starter session. By chance, if you have not installed Anaconda, immediately after this session, you try to install it. Even if you don't have the IDE, it is fine for today. But from the next session onwards, it's going to be at a rapid pace, like a lot of things will be covered. So today, since it is introduction, if by chance, if you do not have IDE, somehow we can manage. I have another option for it. But from next time onwards, you must get your IDE. Okay. So let me show you how to get started. Once you have the code file, how do you open a new code file or how do you open the IDE? Once you install Anaconda, you can type Anaconda. So you will have something called Anaconda Navigator. So click on Anaconda Navigator. Anaconda Navigator will give you all the shortcuts to open your IDEs or everything related to Anaconda. So it is kind of initializing. It will take a couple of seconds of time, less than a minute. Here is the Anaconda Navigator. It is showing multiple items here. If we directly go through all of them, it will be confusing. Slowly, I'll introduce all these one by one, one by one to you later on. As of now, can you tell me which is the icon that I should be clicking on? Can you make a guess? The icon that I have to click Jupiter. on. What is that I have to launch? Jupyter Notebook. So if you go to any of the companies like HSBC, Citibank or JPMC or any of the companies right now, if you ask them, hey, you were working on Python, what is the IDE that you're working on? They'll say, you know what? I'm working on Jupyter Notebook. Okay. Most of them will say Jupyter Notebook. Some of them may say like a few of them may say spider, but Jupyter Notebook is a, a kind of a gold standard within the whole industry of data science. Almost everybody works on Jupyter Notebook. In our course also, Jupyter Notebook is by a company called Jupyter. It's a, Jupyter is a company name. Actually, these are known as Python Notebooks. You can say, I work on Python Notebooks. If somebody asks you, what is the IDE that you work on? What will be your answer? Are you working on PyCharm? Are you working on VS Code? Are you working on, uh, what do you call, Eclipse? What is the IDE that you are working on? I'm working on Python Notebooks or Jupyter Notebooks. So let us launch it. Once you launch it, it will open this browser kind of setup. On this browser, it is showing you some of the, like basically it is taking you to the root folder within your system. Maybe a good idea would be always create something in either documents or you go to the environment that you want to create. Maybe right now I'm going into documents or you can create a new file here, but let's go to either desktop or documents. Maybe to make it easy for you, let us create a folder on desktop so that you don't need to search anything later on you can directly go to desktop and all your at least the code files will not be very heavy they will be there on your desktop but you can save the file anywhere but that we will get into those details little later so i'm going to my desktop i can create any of these uh a folder on the desktop either that way or if i want to go back to the root i'll click on that maybe if you want to create on documents this is a document this is a list of documents that i have or the folders within the document in that i'm creating a new folder so what is the folder name that i am giving i'm saying my python course 
Python course codes. You can give any name here. Right now I'm giving Python course codes. That is the name that I gave. I will open this and then I will say new notebook. But before that, let me wait for you to quickly complete this, create a new folder, all of you. By chance, if you are not able to install Anaconda, don't install right now. Don't do that right now. You will miss out on important points. You just observe, make some notes and then uh, later on you can install. Okay. And then I will create something called new notebook here. So it is asking for Python kernel. I would say Python 3, I Python kernel. I would say select. And then this is the blank notebook that you should be having. Once you create a new notebook, once you click here, new notebook, you should have this untitled blank notebook. Now what I'll do is I will try to rename this. Let me call this as a session one or a Python basics. Let me say one Python basics rename. So the notebook name is Python basics. This is known as code cell. Whatever you write here, that will be the Python code. If I want to add another code cell, I have this plus sign. Let me highlight this. You have this plus sign right at the top. Can you tell me what will happen if I click on this plus sign? Can you make a guess? What will happen if I click on this <laughs> plus sign? There will be a new cell that will be created. Now that plus sign is adding a new cell. Here you can write some code. Let me write the simple code x equal to 7 and then print x. Can you tell me what will be the output that will be printed? 7 will be printed in Seven. the output. How do you execute this? There is a play button somewhere here. Can you see the play button? This is the play button. So tell me the shortcut if I don't want to use the button. If I want to use the shortcut, shortcut is uh, something that will make us use it quickly. Either you can click that play button, but for that you have to use mouse and uh, keep your mouse on the play button. Otherwise, you can click shift enter. Okay. So either you can click the play button or I'll come here. I am hitting shift enter. Can you see the output? Is it working? Now, if you want to write some text, now this is code. If you want to write some text, let's say sample code. Let me, let's say sample code. This is the text that I want to write, but this is now taken as code cell. The cell type is given here. Right now it is a code cell. So I will change it to markdown. If you change, like you select this cell, change it to markdown. I have written sample code and say markdown. Now, once you execute this, once you convert it to markdown and how do you execute? What is the command? Shift Make enter. So this is now this is known as a text. This is known as code. So now tell me if I write X equal to seven print X and then this is shown as markdown. If I execute, do I get seven as the output here? If I execute this, what will be the output? This is markdown. That means it is just the text. If I execute this, it is just showing the text as it is. And that is the expected nature. Yes or no? That's what we are expecting it to do. Isn't it? So you can have a cell which is code cell. Mostly it will be the code cell. But if you want to write some markdown, what is markdown? You can put heading. For heading, you can give one hash and say, I will say a sample code. Now that is heading of type one. If I want to give a little bit subheading, so I will go here, convert it into markdown. If I give two hashes, sample code subsection. So this will be second type of heading if you give two hashes. So this is slightly larger one. This is slightly smaller one comparatively. But as we keep on going into the course, we will get clarity on that. But right now I'm testing your environment. If you write X equal to seven print X, if that is working, if you write sample code, convert it into markdown, convert that cell into markdown and execute if that is working, then you are on the right path. Now check this. Here I have written X equal to seven. I'm saying print Y. Do you think it will work? No. All of you? No. What will be the error? Name error. Y is not defined. Here I have written print X equal to seven, but print capital X. Do you think it will work? No. Do you think it will work? X is same as capital X? No. This is the error. Have you understood what is the error that you have made? Yes. 
So basically, you have defined, you have stored in X. But if you try to print Y, it will not print. If you stored in X, if you try to print uppercase X, it will not print. If you stored it in uppercase X, then if you try to print it, it will work. Either you change it to uppercase or you change this to lowercase. Python is a case sensitive language, 100% case sensitive. Are you with me? Python, when you are working with the Python, you have to make sure that the kind of naming convention that you have given earlier, it should be exactly the same. Now I have seen that it is very common issue while installing due to some issues in the system or while installing due to some issues in the processor, we may get some errors in the installation of Jupyter Notebook Anaconda itself. But how do we resolve those issues? So for that, I'm giving you an option. You can use, this is known as Python Notebook. You can use Python Notebook on Google Cloud. So that doesn't require any installation. Maybe for your classroom exercises, you can use this, but you have to fix it later on. This is a temporary solution that I'm giving you for working on the classroom exercises. So how do you work on Python notebooks on cloud environment? You would say Google Colab. What is it? Google Colab. All of you open a new browser and type Google Colab. The first link, welcome to Google Colab. Open that. And then, you have to log into that browser, then it will give you an option for new notebook. Can you see the new notebook option? Observe this first, then you can uh, do it. Google Colab, new notebook, click on that new notebook. Then there will be a blank notebook that will get opened. This is the blank notebook that I'm talking about, untitled notebook. You can just close this and this is the untitled notebook. Now this must work. There is no chance that this will fail. So if your personal system has any issues, if it has RAM issue, if it has compatibility issue, if it has any other issue due to which you're not able to install Anaconda, if your Jupyter notebook is not working, then you can practice coding here. But this is a temporary solution. Permanently, if you want to fix it, you have to fix the Jupyter notebook. So here again, you can write X equal to seven. You can say print X just for testing purpose. And then once you execute, Control enter or shift enter if you execute. First time it will instantiate your cloud account. And then it will try to execute and give you the output. Now this, nobody should fail in this. This you can name it as Python introduction, one dot Python introduction. Now this particular file, where it gets stored, you will have your Google Drive, right? In that Google Drive, there will be a new folder called Colab Notebooks. There it will get stored automatically. Let me show you where it will get stored. You will have Google Drive. You go to your Google Drive. And then uh, if you go to My Drive, can you see Colab Notebooks with a different color hold together? That will be the case in everybody's system. So in the Colab Notebooks, if you try to sort them, right now you may be having only one file. I have multiple files here. So in the Colab Notebook, I have named it as Python Introduction. Let me just save it. And then if I try to sort it based on this Python introduction. Later on, if you want to refer to that file, you can refer in this manner. The advantage of Colab Notebook is if I write some code, if I want to quickly pass it on to you. Now, without any installation, if you want to execute quickly, I can give you this link. You can execute from your system also. So Colab Notebook is pretty good in terms of learning quickly. But Jupyter Notebook is something that we use in the professional environment. Are you getting comfortable? with the IDE Python notebook, all of you? Are you feeling at home when you're writing code on this? How do you add a new cell? How do you add a new cell, code cell? By using code. How do you add a text cell? Earlier it was adding one cell and converting it into code and markdown. Here you can directly add a text cell and write, I can write something called sample code. Getting it. Hmm? Are you again getting error? No, no, it's the writing, oh. <clears throat> so writing print uh, mm. and <clears throat> within parentheses X, the print should also be in a small letter. Mm, print is a function. What it mm. does is whatever you're trying to print, it will print it. And Python is case sensitive. Let us suppose instead of print, if I write print, now that mm. function is not existing in Python. So it's a Python is a case sensitive language. Let's say the print function with lowercase, that is different than this function. So if I try to execute this, it will say there is no function print is not defined. There's no such function. Okay. Yeah. So you have to be extra mm -hmm. careful. Uh, there is one trick here. If there is a function, then it has a different uh, color. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, one of the, yes. uh, one of the hint that Google 
collab will give you is if you are doing anything wrong it may give you like the like the way when we do spelling mistake in word we get uh, this kind of uh, indication right like, yes. so you will get such kind of uh, indication that that doesn't mean that every time it gives it is something wrong but it is a small indicate initially while you are learning it is a good idea and google collab is wonderful because it gives you an option to generate with ai that means when you are writing the code it will understand what you are trying to write it will give you some suggestions that you can use always so in our course we will use jupyter notebook as well as google collab both of them are similar both of them are called python notebooks we will use both of them in our course to tell the rest of the world we will say that i have coded in jupyter notebook but to do the stuff quickly easily we will use the google collab notebooks because sometimes in some of the systems people are not able to learn python just because their system is not uh, helping them now i have solved that problem by using this google collab all of you in your google collab can you write this code are you getting this output if you if that is the case you are ready your system setup is done so what that is what a, is ide you mean so i think yeah tell me what is the full form of ide ide is like this interface let us suppose right now we are coding on this browser okay this is known as ide ide is something that will take input from you the code and then uh, it will try to give you the outputs so the full form of ide so let us see what is the full form of ide integrated development environment does that make it better integrated development environment so this is a ide this is the place where we code integrated development environment is known as ide so there are multiple ides the other forms of ides right now we have worked on jupyter notebook collab notebook both of them are known as notebook style ides the other one is called spider that is another ide that means it will have a different interface in spider you will have to write code here then you will see some icons here your output will come here so here we are writing the code getting the output in jupyter notebook but here in uh, spider you will write the code here you will get the output here in the output window and uh, there is something called visual studio code that is also similar to this there is something called pycharm these are all different different ides different different ides are used in different different scenarios mostly for uh, python developers or the coders people who are creating softwares people who are working on uh, web page uh, creation etc they will be working on these tools mostly the data scientists use uh, jupyter notebook maybe while we go a little bit deeper into the course then you will understand what are the different uh, ides what are the different uh, what what is the difference from one ide to the other one as of now you say that you are going to code on python notebooks locally it is called jupyter notebook other option is collab notebook shall we proceed yes sir yes so we have added a text cell we have added a code cell and then uh, we are now good to go okay now whatever i am doing right now you can do it in google collab or you can also do it in a jupyter notebook okay but uh, maybe right now we will do it in google collab okay so if you want to know python version so what is coding is all about if you give the instruction to the computer it will it should give you whatever is the output of that instruction let us suppose i want to know python version that is being used maybe in jupyter notebook a different version is used in uh, google collab a different version is used in some other ide some other version is being used how do i know that okay here i want you to be knowing that if you are coding the first attitude that you should have in coding is i may not have the ready made solution with me i have to search for the solution and then i have to get it always my solution that i am looking for or the code that i am looking for is not with me always i have to search i have to find a smart way to get the code from internet quickly because there is no way one can remember millions and millions of different uh, styles of code or different syntaxes so let us suppose i want to know what is the python version now i am going to give you a few tricks here first add few code cells and then whatever you want you write a comment here how do you write a comment in the code cell in the code cell you put a hash and say whatever you want to write after this that is considered as comment can you tell me what is a comment in code what is a comment in code what do you mean by a comment syntax uh, a comment means like something that is non code for example here you wrote x equal to 7 print x if i write this hash you see the color turned into green now if i execute can you tell me what will be the output this is a comment this is a comment is there any code 
sir. No code. So what will be the output? No. Blank. No is it expected output? Is it fair to get this no. output? Because we haven't written any code. This is a command. This is a command. Let us suppose if I write y equal to 10. And then if I write uh, print y. Can you tell me what will be the output? Error. Error. First x will be printed. And In place error. of y, there will be error. Why error? Because y was never defined. It has been commented out. Code commented out. What do you mean by code commented out? This particular piece of code has been commented out. Let's say you have 20 lines of code or four lines of code. Out of four lines of code, two lines of code has been commented out. What do you mean by two lines of code commented out? That means that code won't work. Not executed. That will not be executed. Yeah, that is a perfect way of saying. It will not be executed. You will not get the output of that code. So let me write the command saying Python version. As soon as you write that, Google Colab will understand what you're trying to do. It will give you an option to write the code. It says that either you can use this. This is one syntax. From this particular uh, GitHub repository, it is getting you this syntax. That is one type of syntax you can execute and get to know what is the Python version. Or a better syntax would be import sys and then sys dot version. Automatically it is giving import sys. You start typing import sys or the better version or the previous one that it has given is exclamatory mark python version try to do this exclamatory mark python version i can see that 3.1.0.12.12 dot dot what is the other way of getting it import sys sys dot version 3.1.0 1.2 let me execute the same is there any guarantee that exactly same version would be used in our local Jupyter Notebook as well? Is there any guarantee that my version will be same as your version in Jupyter Notebook? Here, since we are using Collab, all of us will have the same version because Google Cloud is providing. But if I go to your local system, that may be a different scenario altogether. If I go here to our Jupyter Notebook, add a couple of cells, and then if I try to execute this, here it is 3.11, 3.11.7. But it's not a very big difference. We will not see huge difference from here, this version to this version. Anything about 3.10 is almost the same. Maybe slight modifications will be there. This suggestion is available right now only on Google Colab. Probably on your Jupyter Notebook directly, it is not available. We may have to install certain extensions yeah. to get it. But on Colab, it is available. Yeah, I'm getting the same result. Mm -hmm. See, Collab is on Google Cloud. So all of us are using the same Google Cloud. All of us will have the same version. But my Anaconda has been installed a few years back. Maybe it has not been uploaded, uh, updated. Maybe I may have a different version of Python. You may have a different version of Python on Jupyter Notebook. But that is fine. That's not a problem at all. Now, one big point that we have discussed already. But again, I want to highlight here. You have to tell me what is the issue here. I have written print x equal to 7 print x tell me what is the issue here what is the error can you tell me what is the error all of you try this get this error what is the error here what is the issue capital x in the bracket yes so python is case sensitive case yeah. sensitive python is case sensitive is it case sensitive limited to variable names only or functions are also case sensitive functions are also case sensitive Functions are also case sensitive. Is data frames okay? Can I change the data frames or some other type of Python object? Is there anything in Python that is not case sensitive? There is nothing like that. Everything in Python is case sensitive. We cannot say that, you know what? This particular one is not case sensitive. Here you can use uppercase or lowercase. There's nothing like that. Everything in Python. In fact, for most of the programming languages, that is the protocol. Most of them are case sensitive. Some programming languages allow kind of... Uh, partial or full without any case sensitivity but python is case sensitive to be on the safe side always when you are coding coding is case sensitive what do you mean by coding you are giving instructions to the computer when you are giving instruction to the computer it has to be non ambiguous what do you mean by non ambiguous you have defined x but you are passing on capital x now that is ambiguity isn't it the computer will be thinking you have defined this and you are asking me to print this so it has to be very crystal clear instructions to the computer all right. Continue with the next video in the playlist. We are covering everything step by step. If you have any questions or the comments, please post them in the comments window below.